Hello and welcome to the I, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. Hours after the Madhya Pradesh High Court directed the striking junior doctors in the state to resume their duties within 24 hours, terming the protests illegal, nearly 3,000 medicos have resigned from their posts. U.S. President Joe Biden on Thursday promised to share 6 million, which is approximately 60 lakh coronavirus vaccine doses, with India and countries experiencing surges. As the origin of COVID-19 has come under renewed scrutiny again, former U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday demanded China pay $10 trillion to the U.S. and the world. Now for the news in details. In a press conference at the Directorate of Health and Family Welfare, Kohima, earlier this evening, the Minister of the Department, Pang Yupom, informed the media that a 200-bed acute care facility at the CIHSR campus on war footing is in process and it will be pre-engineered modern structure, which will continue to be used as a medical facility even after COVID-19 and added that this facility will be an additional asset to Dimapur and Nagaland. Land. POM further maintained that the department is concerned about the cases that are reported from the villages and in accordance have issued detailed standard operating procedures for containing and managing COVID-19 in rural areas. The state war room, district task forces, the village task forces are fully engaged in managing the pandemic, taking help from all, he said. Further, the minister stressed that vaccination is the most effective tool against preventing infection and the need to increase vaccination amongst the rural population using Covishield vaccine is required. He informed that the DTFs have been instructed to mobilize through outreach activities and having vaccination sites in villages so that entire villages are covered and there is at least wastage, least wastage of vaccine. After the conference, our reporters caught up with the minister and another official. Let's have a look at what they had to say in regard to the COVID situation in the state. So, uh, regarding this... Uh uh, referral hospital, police referral hospital in Chumu. Uh, it is going to be upgraded into 100 bedded from 30. So, uh, what is your comment on that? Like, there is already a shortage of manpower. So, how are you going to accommodate in that hospital now? Now, regarding as far as manpower is concerned and Chumu, no? and the police, I think everything is managing by the DGB and BHQ, and we don't have hand on that. So uh, uh, there is uh, knowledge that uh, there are only 11 doctors available there right now for the 30 bedded. So like uh, for after the upgradation, are you going to improve the number of doctors there on, and the staff? Because that will be purely under the jurisdictions of the police department. We can help them with the technical know-how and give them certain aspects of help in different forms. But pertaining to the manpower, even as a department, we cannot take care of the entire state affairs. So with particular reference to Tsumukedima, it is up to the police department to handle pertaining to the manpower in particular. We can support. Logistic support we can be extended. But as far as manpower is concerned, that is not at the hands of the department. One last question, like regarding the CA, CA, CIHR SSR uh, upgradation, how, how is the going, government going to support? That is the decision of the government. Now the department will get the full cooperation and logistic support. Okay, doctor, 5% uh, of positive cases has been sent for uh, viral NOMI uh, study. Yes. Can you, can you put some light on it? Whole genome sequencing. Yes. So we have sent some samples. So we are expecting the, re the re results of the samples of the tests in about yeah, two weeks' time. This is basically to know which strain of the virus is there, no? So we have sent it. Okay, so then what about the results? 
the results will take at least two weeks. It takes time for them to process it. No? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then how are you uh, handling the po positive patients here in uh, in the state? Like, uh, w we can see that there are so many houses where the positive patients are being quarantined, home quarantine, or something like that. So, but uh, the there is no authority coming here to uh, look after the patient or seal their houses or anything like that from the government side. So uh, how is the government tackling this? Well, sealing is not the solution, no? So it is basically for those people who are positive and they are staying in home isolation, it is also their responsibility to also stay at home in isolation and not to mix around with the people. At the same time, they are followed up, they are prescribed medicines by the doctors and they are also followed up here on a regular basis. Y. Kiketo Sema, IAS, APC and State Nodal Officer for COVID-19 in Dimapur inaugurated a 20-bedded COVID care hospital at Community Health Center in Mitsapima in the presence of the Deputy Commissioner Rajesh Shondararanjan and Dimapur's Chief Medical Officer Dr. Matamjan. In other news, in an appointment letter from the Appointments Committee of the Cabinet has approved the proposal of the Ministry of Home Affairs for the extension of tenure of Intercadder Deputation of Nagaland DGP T. John Lunkumar from Chhattisgarh Cadre to Nagaland Cadre on administrative grounds for a period beyond June 26, 2021 to August 31, 2022. U.S. President Joe Biden on Thursday promised to share 6 million, which is approximately 60 lakh coronavirus vaccine doses with India and countries experiencing surges and its other partners and neighboring neighbors, including Canada. The U.S. will donate 75% of its unused COVID-19 vaccines to the UN-backed COVAX Global Vaccine Sharing Program. The White House unveiled the allocation for sharing the first 2.5 crore doses with the world on Thursday. The president said it plans to share 8 crore vaccine doses globally by the end of June. The U.S. president said that initial 2.5 crore doses would be shipped from existing production of Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccine stocks. Of the first trench of 2.5 crore doses, the White House says about 1.9 crore will go to COVAX with approximately 60 lakh for South and Central America, 70 lakh for Asia and 50 lakh for Africa. The doses mark a substantial and immediate boost to lagging COVAX effort, which to date has shared just 76 million doses with needy countries. U.S. will share 80 million doses of our vaccine supply with the world. Out of this, nearly 19 million will be shared through COVAX, including approximately 6 million doses for Latin America and Caribbean approx 7 million for South and Southeast Asia and approx 5 million for Africa, Biden said on Thursday. The remaining doses, just over 6 million, will be shared directly with countries experiencing surges, those in crisis, and other partners and neighbors, including Canada, Mexico, India and the Republic of Korea, the U.S. President added. He further said that the U.S. would continue to follow the science and to work in close cooperation with its democratic partners to coordinate a multilateral effort, including through the G7. A remote circle in Tawang district of Arunachal Pradesh, bordering China, has created a record of sort as almost all the people in the 45-year-plus age group of the area have been administered COVID-19 vaccine, an official said on Thursday. Bearing three persons who could not be inculated due to medical reasons, all the 617 people in the age bracket living in Mokto Circle received at least the first dose. However, it was not easy at the beginning as many villagers engaged in farming and yak yearing in remote pockets were not turning up at the vaccination centers, Circle Officer of Mokto, Torji Wakto said. Many villagers also did not turn up because they have to reach the vaccination site by car and they suffer from motion sickness, the CO said. A team from Mokto Primary Health Center and the administration went door to door and convinced the people to get the jab. As per the data provided by the medical officer Dr. Jirarul, 614 people above 45 years in the circle have been inculated with the first dose of COVID Shield vaccine and 295 of them received the second dose till Wednesday. 
Wang Chu added that one person from Kaid village and two from Mokto village under the circle could not be inculated due to medical reasons. The Tawang district is under lockdown since May 17, which could continue till June 7. The owner of the illegal coal mine in Meghalayas in East Gentia Hills district, in which five miners were trapped for four days, was arrested, a police officer said on Thursday. The owner, Shining Langstang, was arrested from Tuntka village near the mine, the Red Hole Mine at Umpling, about 20 km from Tayrayat, the district headquarters of East Gentia Hills district was flooded after a dynamite explosion on Sunday. Hazardous red hole coal mining is not permitted in Meghalaya after the National Green Tribunal NGT banned it in 2014. The Sordar mine manager is on the run and we are trying to arrest him. In this regard, a lookout notice has been issued and his posters have been put up throughout the district. Superintendent of Police Jagpal Singh Tanwa told PTI. To joint operations by personnel of the State Disaster Response Force, SDRF and the Fire Service were on Thursday, hosted by a 24-member National Disaster Response Force and DRF team. The divers could not make any headway due to the water level in the main vertical shaft, an official said. At least five miners have been identified by the district administration, four from Assam and one from Tripura, who are stuck somewhere in the mine. The SP said six co-workers of the trap persons who had a miraculous escape as they were outside the mine have been escorted to their homes in Assam. However, the district administration has registered a case against the survivors as they were also allegedly involved in illegal mining, the SP said. The survivors will not be arrested if they comply with police orders to appear as and when necessary, he said. At least 225 COVID-19 positive pregnant women have delivered healthy babies at the Agartala Government Medical College during the two waves of the coronavirus and the newborns were not found to be infected with the virus post-delivery, an official said. During the first wave, as many as 198 COVID-19 infected women gave birth to babies, of which 60 were carousel cases. The figure stood at 27 during the second wave, said Dr. Jayanta Ray, head of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of AGMC. At least 225 corona-infected pregnant women delivered healthy babies and the newborn babies were not infected by the virus due to the utmost care taken by the doctors and the healthcare staff. It was a big challenge to the doctors to bring smiles to the infected mothers, said Dr. Ray. A pregnant mother needs the best care, which was quite a challenging task during the pandemic. But our doctors and other healthcare staff did their best to ensure the safety of both the mothers and the newborns with the highest standard of hygiene, he said. Ray said that some doctors and healthcare staff handling such cases were infected by the virus, but they ensured the safety of the children from infection. Moving further, hours after the Madhya Pradesh High Court directed the striking junior doctors in the state to resume their duties within 24 hours, terming the protest illegal, nearly 3,000 medicos resigned from their posts. The doctors also announced that they will challenge the High Court ruling. Nearly 3,000 junior doctors working in the six government medical colleges of the state resigned in masses from the post on Thursday and submitted their resignation to the dean of the respective colleges. Madhya Pradesh Junior Doctor Association President Dr. Arvind Meena told PTI, the strike, which began on Monday, will continue till their demands are fulfilled, he said. The junior doctors have put forward multiple demands before the state government including a hike in stipend and free treatment for them and the families if they contract the deadly coronavirus infection. Mina said the state government has already cancelled their enrollment for the third year PG and therefore they won't be able to sit for examinations. He further informed the MPGDA will appeal against the HC judgment in the Supreme Court. Mina claimed members of the Medical Officers Association and the Federation of Resident Doctors Association will also join their agitation. The government has promised to raise the stipend by 24% and until they raise it to that limit, the strike will continue, he said. Earlier in the day, the High Court at Jabalpur termed a statewide strike called by the GDA by the JDA as illegal and directed the protesting junior doctors to return to work by 2.30 p.m. on Friday. A division bench of Chief Justice Muhammad Rafiq Ahmad and Justice Sujoy Paul said in case the striking doctors do not resume duties within the said time frame, the state government must take stern actions against them. 
The Punjab government came under fire on Thursday for selling co-vaccine co doses procured at Rs 420 per dose to multiple private hospitals for Rs 1060 per dose. Directly acquired by the state government for people aged between 18 and 44 having comorbidities, for construction workers and families of healthcare workers in government vaccination centers, the private hospitals are reportedly administering the doses to all the adults at Rs 1,560 each. Describing this as a scam, Shiromani Akali Dal Chief Sukhbir Singh Badal demanded a high court probe. Addressing a press briefing, Badal claimed that vaccines were being diverted to private players at the hefty margins to create an artificial shortage. Calling for the resignation of Punjab Health Minister Balbir Singh Sidhu, he lashed out at the Congress government for playing with the lives of people. On this occasion, the Lok Sabha MP also said Mini Mahajan should also not act like a market salesman for private institutions by encouraging people to get vaccinated at inflated rates, alleging that a common man is being forced to pay Rs. 6,000 to Rs. 9,000 for a single vaccine dose for his family. The SAD chief questioned ex-Congress President Rahul Gandhi over this party's hypocrisy as it has backed free inculation. Taking umbrage at the entire COVID-19 management exercise, he stated, it is immoral for Punjab government to profit from the sale of COVID vaccines. People being punished during a time of economic slowdown. Congress government has abdicated its response towards public welfare by corporatizing vaccine distribution. Karnataka government has said it will take legal action against Google for showing Canada as the ugliest language in search results. Google search results showing Canada as the ugliest language in India has sparked an outrage with people demanding action against the global search giant. In view of the protests, Google quickly removed Canada as the ugliest language in India and apologized to the people, saying the search result did not reflect its opinion. Reacting to it, Karnataka Minister of Canada, Culture and Forest, Aravin Limbavali, said a legal notice would be served to Google for showing such an answer to the question. Later, he took to Twitter to express his outrage and demanded an apology from Google to Canada and Canadigas. The Kannada language has a history of its own, having come into existence as many as 2,500 years ago, the minister said and added that the language has been the pride of Kannadigas through the ages. A 10-year-old tiger died at Ranchi's Bhagwan Birsa Biological Park after showing symptoms such as fever on Thursday night, officials said on Friday and added a rapid antigen test ruled out COVID-19, but the big cat samples were being sent for advanced testing. The park, which now has nine tigers, has procured kits to test all the carnivores for COVID there. The swab, blood samples and lung of the tigers were sent to IVRI. For more detailed investigation and find out if the animal was infected with any coronavirus-like disease, said O.P. Shahu, a veterinary doctor at the park. Sahu added the tiger's blood test suggested liver and kidney infection and that the rapid antigen test was conducted on Friday morning. Rapid antigen tests have been found to be less accurate than the polymerase chain reaction tests, which are considered the gold standard of detecting COVID-19. Eight Asiatic lions at the Hyderabad Zoo tested positive for COVID-19 in May. It was the first such instance in the country and prompted the centre to order the closure of all national parks, sanctuaries and national zoological parks. The lions were isolated and have since recovered, while similar cases have been reported from other parts of the country. That's all for tonight's English News Bulletin. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.